So this may be the future, treating dementia with infrared and LED light. What I have on now is the LightWave hood. You know, traditionally I've used this LightWave hood in my practice for treating things like fine lines and wrinkles or pain, scars, um, hyperpigmentation. There's many uses for that. I'm gonna pause it here for a second because it's quite bright. We're gonna turn that down, shut down, get that light down. Um, so, oh, okay, that's better. So we have to talk about this, treating dementia, Alzheimer's, and even Parkinson's with infrared and LED-based light. So researchers have found that transcranial photobiomodulation therapy, also known as PBMT, um, where an individual wears a helmet, similar to what I have, um, with the infrared and the LED light. So a study was done, um, Paul Shazat out of Durham University in the UK led the study over 20 years pinpointing and validating a specific wavelength of infrared light that they were testing with dementia. Through previous studies, he demonstrated that PBMT with a specific wavelength improved memory performance and reduced beta amyloid plaques in the Alzheimer's mouse model. So Gordon Dougal also co-led and devised the PBMT helmet, which works by delivering infrared light at a wavelength between 1060 and 1080 nanometers. And then the helmet has all these fans all over it because it gets pretty warm under there. I mean, I just had this hood on and it was already pretty warm and I'm still seeing red. When you're under a hood or a helmet like this, you are supposed to have eye protection on. But this device, this is the LightWave LED and infrared topical light infusion therapy. And this device puts out um, at the most 900 nanometers. Well, the study went up to 1060, so it's very, very close to the study amount. It's interesting to note too, that in this device, the infrared and LED is supposed to penetrate through the skin, um, sometimes by at least eight centimeters. Well, usually when I have that over the patient's head or my own head, uh, it's, it's penetrating <laughs> eight centimeters would go right to the brain and behind the eye, sinuses, etc. So let's read more about the notes uh, of what went on in this study. So there is a current study and uh, let's see what they're figuring out about it. So they use the PBMT for six minutes twice a day over a period of four weeks. Infrared light at a wavelength of 1,068 nanometers was administered to the participants. And then the control group used a fake helmet. So participants in both groups underwent a series of tests to assess their memory, verbal, and motor skills before and after the treatment period. Those receiving the therapy had significant improvement in their performance in motor finger uh, motor function like finger tapping memory performance like using math uh, math games and um, working memory delayed memory and brain processing speed compared to those in the control group was was improved and then of course no adverse effects was reported that's great so the researchers believe that the helmet again they're using a helmet I have a hood uh, they believe that by stimulate uh, this therapy stimulates mitochondria, which of course leads to a rise in ATP. If you can remember your high school biology, um, in every cell we have the remember the powerhouse of the cell is mitochondria, and mitochondria's job is producing energy, also known as ATP. So you get this rise in ATP, and that provides more energy for cellular processes and nerve cell repair. What's more, they say the therapy can increase levels of nitric oxide, which increases blood flow and delivers more oxygen to the white matter deep in the brain. So um, let's see what else they're saying about this. Of, of course, they're saying much more research is needed to fully understand the mechanism, mechanism of action, of course. And it says that ease patients can deliver this in the, in the comfort of their own home. Um, and then they talk about treating other disorders such as Parkinson's, traumatic brain injury, or motor neuron disease. I kind of think of the possibilities of this with patients with um, nerve damage from um, multiple sclerosis or myasthenia gravis or ALS, I mean, um, peripheral, peripheral neuropathy. Um, I, I, I mean, the, the possibilities go on and on. So this is really interesting. Um, 
So let's see here. It also says PBMT, also known as transcranial near-infrared treatment, has been found to have similar benefits in separate Alzheimer's clinical studies um, involving the originals Chazet and Dougal. In one of these studies, led by Jason Huang out of Texas A&M, discovered that the therapy had a positive effect on both men and women with mild to moderate dementia. I mean, this is really exciting. And I actually first heard about this. I was watching a TED Talk and saw them talk about it. I thought... I already have one of those therapy devices. I'm not using it for dementia. I use it for, I'll have patients with a knee injury come in and I put the hood over the knee. Um, and again, the benefits you can have on the things I discussed earlier. So there's a current study going on right now. Um, this is the Light and Cognitive Therapy for Alzheimer's study. Um, it is going on until December, 2023. And the study, um, they define it as electrical activity in the brain known as gamma brain waves helps connect and process information throughout the brain. Research suggests that exposure to the light flickering at 40 hertz may, provo may promote gamma wave brain activity, which could potentially activate cells in the brain to eliminate beta amyloid plaques that are common in Alzheimer's disease. This one year observational study will test the ability of patients using an iPad application. For example, they're gonna use an app and they get to play Sudoku and Tic-Tac-Doe, and they're gonna measure their responses before therapy and after therapy. And um, so again, they're gonna be ex exposed to light therapy at 40 hertz, and they're gonna keep collecting info. Um, patients uh, that are gonna participate in the study cannot have any epileptic seizure history, including febrile seizures. You can't have significant diseases of the eye, such as macular degeneration. Makes sense, because when I had the hood on just now and I didn't have my eye protection, like I'm still seeing red right now. So I also need to say, some of these LED light devices um, are sold online and you have to be very careful to protect your eyes. And again, the wavelength of the small devices you can get on Amazon and all that is not the same wavelength as these devices. So. Okay, that is pretty exciting information. And um, let me know if you have heard about this or do you have questions about this because I kind of want to do my own trial. I think I'm going to start using the helmet here or my own hood. I, not that I have Alzheimer's or dementia, but I'm just curious if I see any, any effects as far as um, can I process quicker? Is my memory, cogn cognitive function going to improve? Um, so I will keep you posted with that. I'm going to do my own little, my own little experiment and study here, a, a one person study. But I think this is fascinating. I also am going to say we're using light therapy. And what are we? I mean, we are beings of light. If it comes down to it, I'm, I look like I'm a ball of mass, but technically, I am little small pieces of atoms all clinging together with electrons all around them. And basically, I am a wavelength of light. So can light treat light? Yeah, seems like it can. Seems pretty interesting. Okay, so again, please comment below if you have any thoughts on this or comments or questions. I would love to hear your input. Thanks for watching.